What's up guys, we're in LA. And we're about to drop $5 million. Let's go. RM6701, Rose RM6701, white gold. Bought and one is already sold and we haven't even gotten on a plane to LA yet. Plane got delayed, terrible, but guess what? While it was delayed, I got a phone call from someone else, ended up buying two Richard Mills before I even got on the plane. There's one thing I would like to advocate for, for Luxury Bazaar to start chartering private flights. I can't stand this airport shit anymore. I'm very hungry, I'm very sleepy. They've changed the gate on us six times. My new Instagram handle is going to be The Petty King. The Petty King. I understand. You're, you're coming here right now? Okay, I'm at the hotel waiting for you. Thank you. So the power of Instagram, me and Roman had posted on our stories that we were going to be headed out to LA to meet some clients and we wanted to see if anybody was willing to meet. So as soon as we landed and checked into the hotel, there was somebody already waiting for us. Let's see the goodies. Rolex Meteorite Pepsi GMT, reference 126719, behind door number two. Probably and arguably the most popular and famous watch of all time, the Rolex Daytona Panda. And although we say watches are not investments, if you pick this up anywhere from six months ago below, it is a hell of an investment. So here we have a Day Day 40 in white gold reference 228239 with a meteorite diamond dial. This is probably my top five dials on the market period. This is just super clean. I've had this on and the platinum version. The older 26300 ST, also known as the Panda at the time, 39 millimeter Royal Oak Chrono. I really wish and I'm really happy that AP kind of went back to the 39 millimeters with some of their new releases because I think it's just the, the perfect, perfect case size that AP makes because for me, 41 is a little bit on the bigger side and a 39 just wears much more flush on the wrist. Ladies and gentlemen, here we have Got a green diver here, reference 15720 ST. And a latte. And then we have latte. a piece unique here by the name of Roman Shark. <laughs> <laughs> Priceless. This is actually one of my favorite divers probably ever produced behind the white ceramic diver. I just love the color scheme and the interchangeable strap. Hold your green, baby. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> that's all, folks. Can I get a lift? Oh, no, I mean, man. Me and Adrian walking down Rodeo Drive and Mike, aka RM Plug, another watch dealer that we do business with and know, pulls up on us. Talk about a small world. Oh. Big shout out to RM Plug. I called an Uber and he showed up. So <laughs> I'm about to get I'm about to get a ride. <laughs> Off to a bunch of appointments today. It's gonna be a super busy day. I don't know how we're gonna cram it all in. Nevertheless, off to our next stop. Let's see if we can buy some more stuff. All right, let's spend some money. Went to see another friend of ours in an undisclosed location, and this is where we bought a lot. Let me show you a few candies. Harry Winston dual time with baguettes. What a million dollar watch. Here we have a pizza treasure, or my treasure as I like to call it, a Richard Mille RM11 titanium sandblast. So this, this is a great piece simply for the color of it. That sandblasted gray looks so good. The only problem with this material is that it scratches very easy. So you have to make sure if you're buying something like this that it's in the proper condition. Otherwise the servicing on it is a pain. Next up we have the latest concept baguette. Five pieces made in the world. This is probably the best looking ladies watch watch. Ladies watch, period. It's killer. Stainless steels, Hanna Daytona, new cereal, can never get enough of them. Prices keep climbing. Lion Sun, perpetual calendar chronograph. It's the 5970 of longest, super complicated. The back of this thing is monster. I love looking at the back it's of Lion really, Sun. It's not really 5970 because 5970 isn't a split second. It's more, 50, more 5204. Thank you, Adrian. You're welcome. More 5204, absolutely. Another quarter million dollar watch. We have an AP Metropolis in rose gold, oldie but a goodie. Not your, not your atypical AP, as people think of. Good enough. J Jules Audemars Piguet, jump hour minute repeater. Understated, for those that know, no. And of course, a couple of Edward Piguet turbions on white golds. I love buying these things up because there's absolute mad value in these. So here we have a Royal Oak. A day date, and for those who think it's an actual Royal Oak, it's not. It's actually an older Royal Oak offshore with a sick orange dial. Very, very rare piece. From oldies but goodies to one of the thinnest watches made in the world, the Bulgari Octa in rose gold. I can plenty of these in titanium. I rarely come across the rose gold. I love the matte finish on the watch, and look at how 
thick or thin oh, okay. this watch is. Another oldie but a goodie and what, a, what would have been an, a sick investment if you would have picked these up years ago. This is a 5060 Patek Philippe Aquanaut. A watch that you could have picked up for under 10,000 not too long ago with a market price of pretty much climbing to $40,000. And when he said under 10,000, way under. Like I used to, I remember owning this watch before his time for like three, four grand. It's crazy. But he's a dinosaur, so. <laughs> How about a Brigade? Look at the dial on this Brigade. I mean, you see a lot of the Type 20s, the Aaron Lalls and all those things. Uh, rarely do you find it with this dial. Absolutely amazing watch. And I actually really love the bracelet on this. I wish they kept the style bracelet with the high polish. Guys, here we have another not atypical Audemars Piguet. This is not a Royal Oak. This is actually an all diamond millinery. You want to talk about dinosaurs? I remember exactly how much we sell for $438,200. There you go. But last but not least, I'm going to show you a DeWitt. I like to buy value, right? With a stupid retail upwards of a quarter million dollars, having to buy this watch and at less than 70 off, uh, I really couldn't pass up. And as I always say, how do we do it? Quantity. My favorite kind of spot when you run into a dealer you've done business with for years that knows what he's doing and you know what you're doing in a matter of under an hour, we managed to pick up just about a million dollars worth of stuff. I gotta give it to you, there's a couple of really good buys in there. On to our next stop, now we're going from 90210 to Melrose to downtown, which is the jewelry district for LA, let's go. We're about to go see my man Camrack. We're here in LA Diamond District, and it's literally a diamond district. I didn't see a single window with watches. Well, his name is not Camrack. What the hell is his name? His name is Cameron. <laughs> no, it's Camrack. It's Cameron Shack. Oh, it's Cameron. <laughs> All right, yeah, it's Cameron there. 10 years we've known this guy, and his booth is always literally set up next to us at IWJG, and he still calls him Cam Shack or whatever the hell it was. All right, so we're currently on the wrong floor. That's a sweet number. We gotta go down three. Tony Montana back here, look at this. Beautiful. You know, it's, I needed a PhD to find this office. <laughs> That's because you come from Philadelphia, bro. The, the IQ there is not as high as here. We're, We're larger than New York. So the difference is like in LA, everybody has a home here. My friend Cameron, I like call him Camrack, but irrelevant. This guy's literally out of uncut gems, the West Coast version. Everybody has a cousin or a mother or father who's in the business. In New York, the place to go buy jewelry is 47th Street. Here, everybody knows that has a cousin or somebody who's in the jewelry business. And no matter what, whether you, you charge higher or less, they're gonna 100% go to that person no matter what. It's just, it's just blind. Nobody here, like if you see two guys next to each other in one booth, they'll never work with one another. They f hate each other. What? Where in 47th Street, like I buy from you, yeah, I yeah, sell yeah, to him, yeah, like yeah, in LA, yeah. if I go downstairs, they won't sell me. What is they it? Think what? That they, they think they undersold me. If they sold <laughs> oh, you got one over me. Oh, if Cameron buys it, I, I sold it to cheapest. Cameron's gonna make money. If they think if I make money, they sold it Mainly. to Cameron. Apparently, you'll get stabbed in the back every step of the way. And that's why I'm on the East Coast. So over the years of buying a lot of watches, uh, there's certain things that I like to look out for, especially if it's pre-owned. And one of the things is if it's been polished or not. There have been some watches that have been severely over polished and there's some watches such as this watch the 5980-1R that had a really nice polishing job so Cam asked me if he thought I was polished there's certain things that I look for in polishing such as edges certain polishing lines symmetry my eye has gotten used to it over the years you think it's been polished right I think, yeah. I think the case is 100% polished I think so because if you look at the if lines look at the lines coming down it's here not the it's not in, but that's so, that's so also these, not factory so these, lines so these polishing lines questionable it's what happens right here. If you look really carefully, it's like... It's not It's not perfectly straight? It's, it's not, yeah. It's, it's all blotched. Blotched, you know I got you. People think they make our money on appreciation. They're f***ing idiots. Because they don't realize... Of course we don't. It's like, it's like, oh, I put $10 million in the hopes that it's going to go up a little bit every year. But what they don't realize, we make our money on activity. Dude, what, I'd rather not so, have any so, appreciation so, so, in 10 so, times so, activity. So we import a lot of stuff in yeah. from overseas and stuff. I do everything properly. I don't fuck around with it. Same thing. Sometimes, so every 10, 20 packages, one gets stopped for inspection. With COVID and everything else, a process that used to take a day or two can take two weeks. You know how many watches appreciate it like 20% Bro, by the time I, I got them? I know someone that got seized, okay, a huge package. It took three years for him to get it back, and the merchandise is cut like five times for it. Like he, he had like platinum Daytonas in there for like 40 grand. <laughs> that kind of price. Cameron makes a good point in regards to people think that we make money on appreciation. 
or the real dealers that move plenty of stock on a daily basis, that's not the case. We don't buy something and put it away and hope for it to appreciate, right? Yes, there's a few key pieces specifically vintage things that sometimes I will put away, but that's not the business model. The business model is to buy and to turn and to have your finger on the pulse of the market to an extent that you're able to buy right, even though the prices may be changing daily, hourly, or, or weekly. I will say this, there's reasons that there's not a lot of gray market here. I mean, the way he explained it, like how everybody, you know, cutthroats each other here, or whatever you call it, yeah, like it's the most ridiculous thing. Understood. Like, I could never be here, because I would never do that to somebody, and, I would, and people would take advantage of it. I mean, based on what he said, a gray market dealer will not survive on the street. If you go in New York, everybody works with each other. Yeah. The idea is, is there's some sort of camaraderie where here it doesn't exist. Here, they try to figure out a way how to screw you over $50 on a fucking $10,000 watch. The fact, the fact that he puts weights of his watches on the bags, I have never seen that before. Well, never. now you know why. I know, sounds weird. Why would he weigh his watches in the packages that they're in? Give you a perfect case example. He takes five watches, gives them out to five dealers. Gives, take, a guy comes up, says, hey, can I have a few day just? I want to show it to a client, I'll sell one. He'll go and do that with another dealer, another dealer, and then bring back his day just, switching the bracelet out, taking out a couple of links, and then Camrack will take the watch, put it on the scale, say, why, why is this way less? Oh my God, it's missing a link. That's the kind of bad sh that goes on there. It's ridiculous, I know. So here we are to see our great client and an old friend. For well, privacy reasons, obviously, he's not going to be seen on camera, but we'll certainly show you some kick-ass stuff. All right, so a little bit of background for you guys. I've known this gentleman for pretty much the day I started in this business and the way we met each other is obviously through the internet. Called me up, is like, I really like watches. What do you think of my collection? And the first thing I told him is I think you should sell off 80% of your stuff, which he ended up doing and he got himself into other things, APs, Paddock. Paddock is his number one passion. F. P. Jordan is probably the number one passion right now. A recent one, obviously, right? Yeah. But Definitely uh, the number one passion right now. So we're gonna look at some of this watch collection. Me and Adrian are gonna take a look, and then we're gonna go look at some cars. So Adrian, yeah, pick one watch out of this box. What to, to choose? Like if you chose oh, one, no, which you one? Can't do that to me, man. What I do love about the collection is just is a mixture of perfect of sports, and just the, the classic leather strap, more or less elegant dressy watches. I mean, you got. I mean, I could just name the whole collection. You want me to go down? Let's go. All right. So we got a 5270G here. We have the 5170G, 5960P. This, this is the biggest sleeper right now. That's crazy market value, 5070p. I think it's a 5231j. We have a sea dweller here with 5168g, 5740g. That is a 16622 yacht master. Jordan, I'm gonna need your help on right there. <laughs> that 59, 5905 in stainless steel, the new one on the bracelet with the green dial. This is a 5520p pilot. Now I know it's a chronometric blue. Here we have a 5905P in blue, 5968A, 5212A. I thought it was 5122. That's a 5212. Oh, it is a 5212. That's a 5711 blue. So then I probably get to my favorite watching the collection. <laughs> I, was gonna, I knew you were going to pick that watch. That's the 5976. And that looks like a skeleton minute repeater Jordan of some sort. It is. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> All right, so I've that's, never that's, seen that in my life. Okay. So this is black label. A vertical tourbillon. In this market, would have to give you a left kidney to get one of those. I don't have one, I cannot get one. Mr. Jordan, if you're watching, I would absolutely love one, and I promise you, I will not resell it. Look how subtle this is. If you put this on your wrist, nobody will ever know yeah. what you have on your wrist. If I had to pick my favorite watch. Mm, I, I don't even know what to do. This, this black label vertical tourbillon is amazing. That's what, what, probably, what, 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 what is the market that, value on something like that? Gotta be like, I don't know, but the market is gonna be 2X in the very least, as far as I'm concerned. This one is probably the most valuable in the collection here. Market price pushing 700,000 today, so. I mean, but some of, yeah. some of these pieces are absolutely insane. Can we see the other paddocks over there? Here's one watch I know I sold them. It's a 5970 uh, Double J. Sealed. Double sealed. And this is, something, this is something that is an extremely, extremely big sleeper. They said the same things about the 3970s, which were the predecessor to this, and they're slowly creeping up in value. The only thing this has up on the other one is the fact that it's just bigger and looks much better on the wrist. This is from the New York event when they made special editions. This was for 175th anniversary, and they made a special set of watches. Of course, 
He got to go to that party. I didn't because everybody knows me. He's a great market dealer, but maybe one day I'll, att I'll attend him. I actually have to say, it's very rare that you're gonna find a sealed example of a 5980 rose gold. Me personally, you know, obviously if it's an investment, you wanna keep it sealed, it's gonna garnish a little bit more money, but uh, I would have a hard time not wearing it. I mean, listen, I will say this. When, when you're in the industry and you come across so many watches on a daily basis, you know, millions and millions of dollars, you kind of become numb to stuff that comes in. It's very rare that you hold a watch that impresses you. Doesn't it? This is incredible. People have no idea. That watch is more complicated to make than this. Did you know this? Look at yeah. that. Look at this. It's a dead beat seconds there. Dead beat, yeah. You guys see what that tally up to? And that's only about maybe 40% of his collection. Pretty damn impressive. But the most impressive part about my friend and Klein is the fact that he's a true watch lover and connoisseur. He doesn't sell his watches. He buys them for what they are. And he could care less what the value is because he buys them, wears them, and enjoys them which is what I always urge you guys to do. We're at an undisclosed location where there's a warehouse full of cool cars that I cannot wait to see. <laughs> We're currently breaking into this warehouse. We're gonna try to do a Fast and Furious style and steal a few cars. Let's go. What is this? Wow. This is me right here. Beautiful. This is me right here. And this is? Oh, this is 20 SC 3.5. It's 400,000. <laughs> this is my speed right here. This is Adrian. This is Adrian. RS wide sec package. I love that. Yeah. I love that. So what year is this? I mean, look at the condition though. Like yeah. they're, they're all like pristine. Uh, you know what this is? It's a 911 Speedster. Yeah, brand new. Yeah. yeah. This is like this is like the true driving Porsche right here, manual. It's well, a it's like it's, it's a grand tour. It's a okay. grand it's a grand tour. Adrian, but which one would you take? Yeah. I gotta go with the GT2 just because it's got that that wow factor plus the wing on the back. Do you see his wing? Oh my god! I didn't do it. That's how it came from the factory. Yeah. That's insane. That was all carbon fiber on. I mean, but it looks insane. I mean, the, this is like the purest car, the Speedster. Yeah. The red. That's why. I this is harder to get than this, right? This is much harder to get. Yeah, this I'm is. impressed. Adrian, I know you're impressed with the Porsches, but I'm impressed with oh. this. Oh, but wait, there's more. <laughs> I like how these are situated cool. to look at the cars. Yeah. This is wow. super cool. This is awesome. Yeah. This is cool. Very cool. The Chevelle is mm, very, very cool. Overall, trip was a success. We spent just about $5 million. We didn't quite get to the $5 million mark, but we were close. Loved LA. It was a great trip, but I'm still happy to be home. I prefer the East Coast. This video kicks off season three of Gray Market. I'm gonna try a few different things here just the same to try to continue keeping you guys entertained. As always, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, click the bell, notifications, all those wonderful things that help this channel grow. I thank you for sticking around with us and we'll see you next time on Gray Market.